Amazon's debut phone isn't bad, per se, but there's little incentive for anyone to switch carriers or platforms to buy it. Its unique features don't provide enough utility, and come at the expense of both battery life and performance. Regardless of the bells and whistles on offer here, Amazon is walking down a difficult path. The Fire is only available R$650 full retail. It's going up against high-end devices from companies that have been making phones for years. In order to win over customers, Amazon has to convince them that the Fire is worth dropping loyalties, switching carriers, resigning contracts and handing over a lot of money. Unfortunately, the company has a few lessons to learn before that's going to happen. Amazon appears to have put so much effort on the Fire Phone's unique features that it didn't focus on making the device attractive. It looks more like a prototype than a phone that's supposed to compete against well-designed beats like the iPhone 5s, LG G3 and HTC One M8. The use of glass on the front and back is a throwback to the Nexus 4 and iPhone 4 and 4s, which means it's a fingerprint magnet and more susceptible to breaks than polycarbonate. The sides are protected with a rubberized polyurethane material, however, which should improve the phone's chances of survival if dropped. The fire is thicker than the iPhone 5s and Galaxy CS5, just as thick as the LG G3 and thinner than the One M8 and Moto X yet Amazon's inaugural phone feels thicker than all of them due to its blocky design. The sides are mostly blunt, but they taper toward the back, which lies completely flat and at 5.64 ounces 160G, it's heavier than the competition. The only exception is the One M8, which weighs exactly the same as the Fire and has a more premium feeling aluminum body. Amazon's goal was to make the Fire ideal for one-handed use. And indeed, it succeeded, the screen measures a manageable 4.7 inches and the sides are easy to grip. It's comfortable to hold and my thumb could reach nearly every part of the display, so I rarely felt like I had to use two hands unless I was typing a message. The back isn't as busy as I expected. Despite being an AT&T exclusive, the carrier's logo is nowhere to be seen on the device front or back. All you'll see here is Amazon's logo near the top and the obligatory federal certification details near the bottom. Aside from that, the camera, LED flash and mic are neatly tucked away in the top right corner. Sadly, the front is a massive contrast to the minimal back, with the five lenses being the primary corporates. There's a Kinect-like sensor on each corner and a selfie cam just to the right of the earpiece on the top. If you're already wary of Big Brother, the idea that five eyes are looking back at you won't help your anxiety. The only button is a Samsung-esque home key that protrudes out of the glass underneath the display. Finally, the bottom of the phone houses a stereo speaker, mic and micro USB 2.0 charging port, while the left side features a volume rocker, camera Firefly quick access button and Nano SIM slot. The other stereo speaker is on the top, between the 3.5mm headphone jack and power key. The latter is placed on the left side, which is perfect if you hold the phone in your right hand. Since I prefer using my left hand, however, this was a big pain point. Though it's not horrible by any means, the Fire's display quality is not on par with other flagships. It has a 4.7-inch 720p LCD panel, which offers a relatively unimpressive pixel density of 315 ppi. This is far lower than the GS5, 1M8 and G3, and only a few ticks below the iPhone 5s. On a positive note, the viewing angles are good and text is still crisper than I would have expected. Its colors are accurate and the 598 display is incredibly bright, which makes a difference when you're trying to read the screen in direct sunlight. The video quality isn't quite as good as other flagships, but otherwise there's very little to complain about aside from the difference in resolution. The $200 model comes with 32GB of internal storage, which beats out the 16GB that the iPhone 5s and GS5 offer at the same price. It doesn't feature a micro SD card slot, however, so you'll need to shell out another $100 if you want the 64GB model. One of the biggest disappointments about the Fire Phone is it agreement with AT&T. It's also not launching with any international availability. Even worse, the phone is locked to only function with AT&T SIM cards, so if you plan to travel internationally, you'll need to be lucky enough to get an unlock code, either through the carrier or unofficial means. All of these factors will severely limit the number of phones Amazon can sell.
very few people will want the Fire desperately enough to switch carriers or go through the hassle of unlocking it. If Amazon wants to make the Fire Phone successful, it's not going to do so by making it available to just one network in the world. On a related note, the phone is locked even when you buy it at full retail price directly on Amazon. It seems pretty clear, then, that Amazon is trolling us. The Fire's loaded with cellular connectivity, the phone is compatible with 9 LTE frequencies for use in most parts of the world, in addition to Pana Band HSPA Plus and Quad Band GSM Edge. But the only way you can use it is by paying an arm and a leg for international roaming plans or finding a place willing to provide you with the proper unlock code. Amazon also made a misstep with the Fire's primitive Bluetooth connectivity. Most, if not all, competing devices support version 4.0 plus LE which makes it possible for phones and wearables to communicate with each other. I've confirmed that the Fire's hardware technically supports this version, but its firmware doesn't, at least, not yet. This means that if you use a smartwatch or a fitness band, you'll want to hold off on buying the Fire until it's updated with official support. Out of curiosity, I sideloaded the Pebble app it's not available in the Amazon App Store and tried to pair my steel with the Fire. It connected successfully, but the Pebble consistently dropped its connection within a couple minutes. Thanks for watching New Tech Channel. Stay tuned and subscribe for more videos.